Hello, Novea. Hi. How are we doing? I'm good. It has been a while since we've had you in here. I know, it's been like eight months. I'm... I feel like you guys are in a goofy mood because you got to spend the day in town together. You went to the store together. No fair. You, you didn't want to come. Advantage. I didn't want to go. No. I don't like going into town. I don't like having to leave the property. Well, well we invited you and you didn't want to come. How was the excursion? Um, it was interesting. I haven't ridden in the car with Nevea for a while and now she's allowed to listen to the radio and that was a mistake. Also, we got like four or five inches of snow today. How did she do in the snow? Is, is this the first, is that the longest drive you've done in the snow? No, off, I've been driving in the snow. And off the driveway, it was totally plowed. <laughs> what? Yeah, totally plowed. Like for the first time ever. Oh, our roadway was? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. She's all like, oh, I can't drive. I can't drive in the snow. And as soon as we got off the driveway, it was just like, no, my minivan would not totally have made fine. it up and down that driveway. So no issues at all? No. Uh, yeah. I chauffeured her and then I told her in my car, my radio. Mm, and and Taking charge. So we listened to Copacabana. That's not what I would expect. It wasn't great. It. She enjoyed it. And Lola, I was a showgirl. But that was 30 years ago when they Back used to have a when show. When they used to have a show. So we thought we'd bring Navea in here after this awkward conversation to, to just, you know, touch base. It's been a while, like we said, and also we're going to discuss some generational differences because Navea keeps telling us that our generation, which technically, apparently, we are millennials. You are. She uh, claims is responsible for basically ruining the world. <laughs> it's a little dramatic. No, it's I like mean, you it's literally little... said that we were the worst generation. Not you specifically. Thank you. But mo millennials as a whole, I feel like... Millennials kind of ruined everything. Explain. First of all, we have an <laughs> ongoing debate in our household, mm -hmm. including one that occurred here right before we hopped in, into yeah. the podcast studio about what generation mom and I fall into. We were born in 1983, which technically, I guess, makes us millennials. Millennials. By two years. However, there are, is a subset where we uh, are zenials as well. There's a subcategory. I didn't make it up. Look it up. I didn't <laughs> it's make just it up. An internet. Um, anyway, so explain, why does it, why is it you think that, that mom and I and all of our uh, good friends are responsible for ruining society <laughs> for you and your young okay. cohorts? Okay. 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 You didn't phrase that correctly. Not you and your friends ruin society. We don't have any but friends. <laughs> this is not an honest conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So there is currently Gen Z. Those are the new young people. And everyone is saying Gen Z is out of control. Like all this crazy stuff is happening in society. So yeah. it's Gen Z's fault. I don't think it is Gen Z's fault. All this stuff was ushered in. Like every societal problem we have was ushered in by millennials. Like what? I mean. Like the, the wokeness? Just the ex. You can go it's there. So no, hey, speak your mind. It go is so extreme. It is so extreme. What is? Everything. Everyone's views. Like the, okay, the division and how extreme all the sides are and like, yeah, the crazy wokeness, that mm -hmm. all started with millennials. Okay. That, I don't feel like that was a thing before. I won't contest that because yeah, that became a thing, what, 2010-ish? Well, I think our parents on. started it. Like our parents were kind of that hippie generation that is 60s and 70s kids the and then boomers. they sort of started mm -hmm. it and then it, that poured into us and then we were more extreme with it and then that poured into our children. I feel like it kind of, evolved over time though like our our brand of you know when our generation was up and coming was very different from our from our parents and yeah. that that baby boomer uh hippie generation if you want to yeah. call it but that's when that that kind of uh i guess free-spirited breakaway began mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of run amok at this point yeah, yeah. just all the crazy and like, people talk about like the crazy and in, in schools and the crazy and media and the crazy that's been put into movies and stuff but that's all a result of millennials <laughs> that's happened on our generation's watch i mean i guess like we have allowed it and 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 encouraged it but at the same time it is your generation that's pretending to be furries <laughs> and like demanding litter boxes and bathrooms well, all i'm gonna say is that the parents of those kids what are they the millennials. enablers they're enabling not millennials. always <laughs> not always because if then if you don't uh, affirm whatever your kid decides that they want to do, then you're villainized. So there are a lot of people from our generation that are steadfast and they're trying to be good parents and they're trying to be loving, guiding 
sources for their children and they're being demonized by your generation or by i guess our generation too they're being demonized by other millennials so do you think that it's it's a as a parental thing is that where you're coming from that that our generation is responsible for raising a generation that according to you is now is now kind of swinging the pendulum back in the other direction Mm -hmm. to where things are once again becoming more traditional is that correct yeah i think it's kind of weird the gen z my generation is becoming far more like conservative Mm -hmm. and like Christian and a lot of those kinds of values than our parents, which is really weird. I I mean, I guess I would agree with that assessment. I feel like growing up, I feel like kids now are more in tune with political issues and current events and things like that. And they get more riled up over things on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we were in school, we just did not care about (laughs) politics at all. I mean, I did. I got voted most likely to (laughs) argue religion and (laughs) politics. Like in my senior class, that was for some reason on the ballot. And I won that in a landslide. And <laughs> But most of my friends, the reason that I got voted that is because most of my friends did not care about politics at all. And I didn't understand that. But they just didn't. I mean, did you have any friends that really cared about politics? No, but I think that's because we didn't have access to the internet back then like we do now. And there was no such thing as social media. And yeah. I think that's played a massive role. I don't, I don't, I can't put all the blame and earnest on our generation and people our age. I think that there's just, it's a different world now. Than it used to be. And, uh, you know, everybody has access to the internet Mm -hmm. in the palm of their hand and everybody feels as though they have a voice, which they do, Mm -hmm. but they have the ability to uh, put out their own personal opinions, much like we do here on this podcast to a large audience, a number of people. Um, And, you know, it, it, it causes things to become messy at times. Well, so. every, yeah, everything's being exposed now. We have independent journalists yeah. on YouTube, mm-hmm. which is fascinating. I love those channels. It's great. I actually love it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. But that's kind of more your generation that's going out and being the yeah. independent journalists. They're like going against mainstream media. What else can you point to as far as young people, people that are roughly your age and you're currently 17, as far as um, them really embracing these more traditional uh, societal roles, I guess? I mean, there's a lot of, I think because social media, there are so many like different trends and waves. There's a big push on social media to go back to like old traditions and just being more social with people and connecting with people. So many people are throwing social media out the window, like younger people, Mm -hmm. because I think, again, that was another thing that I feel like happened with millennials is like people stopped interacting with each other oh 100 percent. everyone became antisocial. like yes. no more family reunions or anything like that that kind of started with millennials i agree with you yeah we did sort of like stop all of the going to grandma and grandpa's for these big holidays and all the aunts and uncles getting together like that yeah. kind of stopped with our generation yeah and we've sort of discussed that at nauseum but i think your generation also has the benefit of hindsight and being able to analyze the landscape and mm-hmm. seeing the, all the adverse ways that the internet and social media has affected society so maybe you're learning from that and you guys are making an effort to correct it and of course this doesn't apply across the board but i do think you're right it's really interesting to see that becoming conservative or uh embracing god christ and uh faith has become mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. which is a weird thing to see because that definitely wasn't the case when we were growing up yeah the kids are wearing like virginity rocks t-shirts <laughs> and stuff like that like if back when we were in school that was like <laughs> yeah, was but like, even on social media itself you see it's become very trendy has it not yeah mm-hmm. it's become very trendy to be like outspoken christian and i mean that's weird which is a weird thing but I'm, <laughs> that I'm, is not the way it was i, I don't I, think yeah. that's a bad thing i really no. don't yeah it's just a weird combination of uh, coming together of something that's yeah. very very modern versus something that traditionally has been thought of as very old school yeah. and uh, kind of boring and nerdy and At least that was the case, I think, when we were growing up. Well, you guys have grown up with like the greatest technology and advancements of any time in history. But yet I think that the human spirit kind of craves what's real and sort of all the things that you guys missed out on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you actually got a lot of that traditional childhood with playing outside. And you kind of had that 80s, 90s childhood, just like watching cartoons on TV (laughs) and then going out and riding bikes and playing in the dirt and doing all the stuff that we grew up doing because we kind of raised you differently by design yeah yeah you weren't raised in public school and and all of that but i think that a lot of kids feel like they missed out on like that they watch stranger things and shows like that or that 70s show and then they're like i want that kind of childhood i want those kind of memories even saved by the bell and stuff where they'd all get to the cafe like it was just different cafe. no that's yeah a, that's a thing people post a nostalgia for a time that you didn't exist in Mm. it's like you see stuff like that and you feel nostalgic for it like you crave to have that but you didn't even exist you were decades after the fact (laughs) the sad part is you'll never crave it 
or you'll never um you'll never get to experience it yeah. what i say crave you'll, you'll <laughs> never get to experience it the way that we did you can't yeah. recreate yeah. it i think is the word i was looking for um you'll never be able to capture that yeah. fully yeah but you, it's, you it's guys, just interesting that you guys have a yearning for it i find that i feel like you guys don't know how to turn it off like even when you do decide to all go out to a restaurant <laughs> or something and you're gonna sit there and have lunch like you're still like doing that weird thing where you take the picture in front of you and then they take the picture of yourself the and then you, it's so stupid <laughs> and then you, the b-reels what is that b-reel that's not even a thing anymore it was an app i missed it i missed it <laughs> it, was, it was like a one-year thing okay it was it was like it would go off everyone would have the app and at the same time random time of days so you never know when it would go off like noon maybe you'd get notifications saying it's b-roll time you'd have like two minutes and you take a picture of with the front camera and the back camera at the same time so it shows you and oh, your point of view on, so then you could doing. see what everyone was doing what if you're like on the, the toilet or something yeah, what if then you're what? food poisoning? Then, then you'd probably miss the B-reel. And if you miss the B-reel, then you didn't get to see everyone else's B-reel and okay. you fell out of the loop. So now we're getting to the point of, <laughs> now we're touching upon the things that irritate me about people uh, in your generation. Yeah. There's stuff like this and the <laughs> amount of time that gets wasted. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lack of human connection. It's And it's like something like that is absolutely absurd. Like what's the purpose that serves, that has zero, that doesn't bring any value to anyone's life? To be fair, a lot of people did not like it for those reasons. <laughs> it's really dumb. I do feel like your generation is lacking in a lot of ways though. I mean, I'm glad that there's this embrace of, of and yearning for going back to like a more pure time, in my opinion, what I would call a more pure time. But at the same time, you guys waste so much time mm -hmm. doing things that just don't serve yourselves well. It's just, it's so frustrating to see. We've had many discussions about this. <laughs> Screen time discussions? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's get outside. Um, you know, taking what's what's real. Don't get sucked into your phone. Yeah. I, I get that it's irresistible. It's hard. It's hard to do. But your generation does a poor job of uh, interacting, face to face interaction. How's that sound? Yeah, my generation. I'd say like our biggest struggle is just socially. Everyone is just so socially awkward, and not we don't really have like a desire. I mean, some people do. That's why there's the pushback of like get rid of your social media yeah. and actually have like interactions and go back to like. But then how getting will you make a living people together <laughs> stuff like that like actual socialization right. but i mean most of us we're like people don't even have the desire to do that anymore it doesn't what else where else do you think your people of your generation fall short because the world's gonna be a very interesting place 10 years from now when you folks are in charge yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> shudders with fear that's scary uh i feel like uh we're very passionate, which can be good or it can be bad. It depends on your views. Do you feel like people your age have a firm grasp of history? No. No. And I, I'd, I'd say the same is probably true for our generation as well. Yeah, I think it depends. Oddly, being really into politics is like really trendy. Right. But current events. Yeah. Yes, current without having any Not context historical. that almost makes it more dangerous because your generation is so opinionated i mean like so opinionated and then they want to go to these rallies and they want to be these activists because i think that the schools have really raised kids to be activists like there's literally childhood books that are like i went to this parade <laughs> and so they're like i mean we had books like you know redfish Blue Blue fish. Fish. <laughs> you know like dr seuss and stuff Green and they have and they have activist books on going to parades and like making a stand for like kindergarten it's, oh they got lots of books now i know they do lots and um um so you guys have kind of been brought up i say you guys but like you were homeschooled by us so yeah. it's very very different but your generation was brought up to be very extreme and be very passionate and be very outspoken but the problem is that they so lack the history of all of these issues and where they were derived from and what caused them mm -hmm. and history has been so misrepresented and rewritten mm -hmm. and erased whitewashed yeah yeah that they just don't even get it anymore and they can bring up issues and then like those channels that go around and ask college kids yeah questions <laughs> about like what was the holocaust what was pearl harbor what was you know like these major events what was the cause of the revolutionary war who did we fight in the Revolutionary War, and they can't answer any of these questions. Yeah, those They've, videos are terribly upsetting. Do they, do they make you frustrated to watch? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not funny. No, they're not. They're, I don't they're, think they're supposed to be funny. They're not intended to be funny, but it's it's so concerning. Like, this is a, it's so important. And like I said, it's, it's you and your generation that are going to be molding yeah. the world in the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah. I do feel like uh, 
more conservative people, like Gen Zers, do have a better grasp of history, though, because there's so many weird things that get put out there and like they're rewriting history so much on the opposite side in schools and stuff that like we're always trying to just debunk things. So we that do is our a scary research, part too, though, because your generation is getting their news from where? Social media. And they're getting their uh, historical context from where? Social media. But that's the problem. And and not to go on like a misinformation rant, because I, I think, I don't know, misinformation is a thing. But I just saw a girl today who who very uh, confidently professed that the Bible was written 2,000 years after the death of Christ. What? Yeah. <laughs> And because of that, it wasn't a it, it wasn't worth taking seriously. Basically, there's some really crazy stuff out there. Like I saw the new the new trend in schools is that they're going to be teaching that the Revolutionary War was fought over slavery, and that the reason that the Pilgrims came and wanted to get away from um, Europe and the Church of England and all of that, and the reason that we fought the English in the Revolutionary War. The main reason for coming to America was that they wanted to own slaves and everything. And that that whole revolutionary war was fought over slavery, not the civil war. But the, and I'm like, wait, what? Like, that's not the pilgrims quest when they came here. Right, like the, the pilgrims came here so they could have slaves. Yeah, that's like literally what they're saying, that the whole that America was literally founded on the, this desire. And that's such a damaging thing to teach to erase the truth and then replace it with something that fits an agenda. So last time I learned about uh last time I learned about that it was because of religious persecution. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean that that's would not be the correct. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's the difference between getting your history from homeschooled <laughs> from selected Instagram as actual, opposed to your mom. Yeah, at actual home. selected historical <laughs> it depends on who your mom is <laughs> it does depend on who your mom is and it depends on your household but our household is, is a very unique one and we have a lot of these types of discussions um probably to the point that most people would find it pretty odd yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that i'm proud of the way that we have invested in you guys and your upbringing and the things that we place a priority on well, my parents never sugarcoated stuff for us. Like my dad would talk about things that were like almost straight inappropriate at for our age level and show us videos and movies and stuff that were, you know, I mean, we were watching Gettysburg and things like that <laughs> at a very young age, yeah. like, pretty gruesome stuff. But then he would explain it to us. But I mean, we kind of raised our children in the same way. We didn't hide things or sugarcoat or not talk about uh, subjects around you guys. So, I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of people would be kind of appalled at some of the family conversations that we have, but. I'm sure. I guarantee it. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't feel like any of it is out of like out of line, but I guess some people are more like you should. It's, oh, it's just like too heavy handed. Yeah, that's fine. To talk about. but That's fine. I just wish that more people your age had uh, access to information that was that I would consider, I guess, uh, relevant and accurate, more importantly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to have these conversations. And I think it's really funny what's considered. Do you need to open a window? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm sweating <laughs> like, again. It's hot in here. Um, things that are considered like inappropriate to discuss with your kids versus like what's actually being taught at the school and what is actually inappropriate yeah. to be taught to kids. So, I mean, you don't even get me started on that. that Amazing is, how we blur those lines. Yeah. Like, oh, this don't is talk a, about this, but this yeah. over here, which has zero business being presented to children under the age of anything. Uh, 14. <laughs> yeah. Children at all. Crazy. Children in schools just shouldn't be talked about, but that's okay because, well, that's, you know that's part of this curriculum. That's part of this agenda. It's part so of the agenda. That's I'm right. so glad that you got to miss out on that because I literally would have been the parent that ended up on social media as like, <laughs> watch this Karen lose control. <laughs> like <laughs> that would be me. Watch her burn the books. Like, yeah, it would just be bad. It's, I couldn't have done it. Like, and I couldn't have taught in, in, in a school that participated in what I consider to be grooming of young children. Mm -hmm. I absolutely could not do it. Yeah, that shouldn't be a controversial statement. I know. <laughs> Yet it is. Yeah, yeah. Yet it is. So I'm really glad that we were able to homeschool our own little weirdos. How do you feel about things? That since you are in your final year of homeschooling, how, how do you feel? Uh, you know, you have, you can, you can look back now and I'm sure you have your own thoughts and opinions on things. What do you, what do you think about your upbringing as a whole or the way that we have chosen to educate you and your siblings? Like homeschooling wise or yeah. just like in general, whole childhood? Yeah, the entire experience. <laughs> Um, Big I mean, question, I know. Sorry. It's a lot to think about. I mean, I've got like 17 years to consider here. I mean, homeschool was. Yeah. I loved homeschool because I just don't think I would have thrived well in a public school environment. I don't. 
Mm-mm. <laughs> you don't want like, it. You're you're definitely the social butterfly of our family. I'm I'm social, but I don't. You have to put up with a lot in public schools, like middle school. I don't know how people do it. I do not understand how you survive middle school and you come out unscathed. <laughs> you learn to adapt. Well, not everyone mm. does come out unscathed. Some no, people get really no. damaged. They get by messed it. up because like middle school is out of control. Middle schoolers are vicious. I'm scared of middle schoolers. It's brutal. I'm 17. I'm scared of like 12 year old girls. But I see middle school girls walking. I'm like, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> don't say anything about me. Do you feel like you have a firm um, understanding of the fact that that you were raised very differently? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that when you're out and about or when you're interacting with your peers? Uh, no, I don't feel a difference. Like, I mean, I you know. I feel like I've, I had to put up with less than they had to put up with. Is that because they tell you stories? Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like I had to put up with less of what they had to put up with. And but I don't feel like socially or anything, I don't feel like there's a difference. Have, do they ever express to you that they, they have a desire themselves or they had a desire themselves to be homeschooled? It, like every single person. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's um, their reasoning? That they just hate going to public school. And everyone says public school is like, the, it's a joke. <laughs> everyone. They're like, it doesn't matter if it's people I know here in Idaho or people I knew in Washington. They're like, public school is a joke like i'm not i haven't learned anything it's just a nightmare in here it's like absolute chaos i don't want to go here Hmm. interesting yeah everyone says they've asked their parents to be homeschooled but it's not i mean it's not possible for everyone Mm -hmm. or their parents just didn't homeschool them and they're like i wish i was homeschooled interesting yeah i don't know well i mean it definitely allows you more time i like that homeschool that you're allowed to or you're not only you're allowed to but you're able to cater education around each kid so like if there was an area you weren't mastering or something like that, we could just spend time on that. And then we were able to just like, I'll buy entire curriculums and I'll throw out entire units because I have the freedom to do that as the educator of my children. Like we decided to throw out the Roman numeral unit for <laughs> Eli <laughs> because like, unless we're watching the Super Bowl, which they say over and over again, what Super Bowl it is. What do you need Roman numerals for? Realistically, weird know. clocks. Or remember the poetry weird unit? Clocks. I think I made you do the poetry unit. Oh, like haikus? Yeah, Yeah. we were just talking about haikus and what haikus (laughs) were, the proper structure. And I ended up throwing it out. Not that I don't think poetry and all of the things are important, but... They come come second to those core subjects. Yeah, Yeah. I just feel like I didn't want to spend two months writing haikus, like Japanese poetry. I just don't know how relevant that's going to be in Eli's life. (laughs) I think it depends on on the child. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Yeah. It's up for interpretation. Deep. Think about it. Deep. 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 So, uh, yeah, you know, like, can you see Eli ever using haikus in his adult life? Like, he's going to be, like, branding cattle. Yeah, you don't need that for the rodeo. Come on. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Like, I just don't see it. He's going to need to know, like, how to convert, like, live weight cattle into (laughs) processed beef. You know, like, basic skills. Every kid is different. And so it just depends. Like the measuring unit and all of that and the metric system and everything was really important for Kira because she really wants to get into canning and cooking. So we spent a lot of time talking about those things because she's going to need to know that. I don't know. I mean, like a lot of you guys aren't going to need to know it. So I don't know. I'm able to like throw out entire units and I like the freedom of that. And I think that was good because we were able to cater stuff like music was a big part of your curriculum. Yeah. Like learning to read music and everything, but I wouldn't make all of the kids do that. You know, what's funny is you're talking about throwing out things that you don't need. I just spent the last three years doing calculus. Well. (laughs) Valid point. (laughs) It's a valid point. You have to get through the basic core subjects in order for you to get a diploma. Calculus is not basic. I went through all of algebra. I started algebra and like, I don't know what curriculum you got me in the fifth grade, but Uh, I've been doing calculus. Well, Long the, time now. <laughs> the homeschool curriculum for math and everything is a little bit more advanced than the public school stuff. Like if, when you graduate, you are through calculus. So mm-hmm. the math does get pretty advanced. I made it to geometry. Oh, <laughs> I hate geometry. Shapes and such. <laughs> we were public school kids. I think I made it to algebra too. So now I have to teach calculus sure. and I am <laughs> incapable of doing that. just flexing on me right now. That's all that is. No, I, I'm Algebra bad. two? Yeah, I didn't make it that far. So yes. Oh. You did, I thought you had to. I took algebra one and then my final math, again, Hawaii public schools, this is me coming <laughs> over. But um, yeah, the highest math I took in high school is geometry. Oh. Total bird. But you know what? I will say that it's very applicable to the things that we are not there doing. So, hey, See? there's an argument in case to be made that that's of far greater importance. Yeah. 
All right. So what about what about guys in your generation? Because I feel like the guys, the young guys are so different than the young guys of our the young guys when I was dating and like you, for example, you guys are still just sort of like we go to work and we're dads and I don't know. Yeah, like, we're dads. like, I don't know. I feel like this is a reflection on me. Right <laughs> no, now. Like you're trying to. I still feel like you guys are pretty like. You're pretty balanced. You so know? we're hardworking, good fathers. Is yes. that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. And and Fair. like our parents' generations were like that and their generation. They're... But now the guys are getting kind of different. <laughs> like there's two extremes and there's not a lot in the middle Mm-mm. that that are like dad. What you know? are the extremes based on your assessment? There and then we'll is. ask Navea for clarification here. But for you, since you just made that statement, what do you think the the two extremes are? So I've been noticing there's either like there's this whole wave of like really machismo guys that are kind of ticked off with the de- with the demasculation. Yeah, with all these <laughs> different women saying like, "Oh, you can't that everything you do is toxic and everything," and they've pushed back so far that they kind of are becoming all of those things, <laughs> and then, but not not all of them, but I'm. It gets pretty extreme. Like mm-hmm. when you hear, like I've watched a couple different TikTok videos and Instagram videos of these men going off and ranting these young guys. And so some of the stuff they're saying is extremely mm-hmm. disrespectful. And then, <laughs> I mean, like really off the wall, like no girl's going to want to date you that has any respect for herself at all. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is they're is it, calling wait, him. Are these the, the like Andrew Tate protégés mm-hmm. yes. of the world? Okay. He, he kind of is the one that like ushered it all in. And now all these little boys want to be Andrew Tate. I don't Tate. think you can put that solely on him. But he's become kind of like this. There's this hypo, hyper machismo movement yes. on, yeah. online, especially with people like him. But yeah, it's not. There's you different see it in real life. <laughs> I'm sure. Of course you do. Of course you do. I think there's there's a bigger conversation to be had about that too. And young uh, young men, especially a lot of young men that like haven't been uh, grown up with a, a dad around. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Of course, they're gonna be attracted to to that type of that personality type. I feel like yeah. they've just gone too extreme, yeah, too maybe far so. on maybe the, so. that side, and then. I mean, the way that they talk about women and everything. And then the other side of it is like the Harry Styles of the world that are wearing <laughs> silk blouses and <laughs> lip gloss and painting their nails. And uh, girls are like, they're so adorable. They're so easy to get along with. What are they calling them? Baby girl boys. Yeah. They're literally like, oh, he's a baby girl. Okay. Love tackle him. it, Nevaeh. Explain. <laughs> what has been your experience thus far? There's the beta guys and the alpha guys. And both of them are the worst. <laughs> Because none of them are don't. The alpha guys aren't, they're not like genuinely masculine. They're so, they're very. You feel like uh, they're overcompensating? Oh, yeah. It's like they're playing a character. And, you know, girls, they used to go off about like toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity. And I hated that term so much. Like, I'm like, masculinity is not toxic. Masculinity is not toxic. And then they're acting so extreme that they're like making the term apply. (laughs) They're being terrible. I don't understand. Like Give a, me an example. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Like the Andrew Tate guys, the way they, the way they talk about women as, uh, basically the whole thing is that women were basically put here to be rewards for men, mm-hmm. and if you don't have, like, a bunch of women and a bunch of notches on your belt, you are not masculine. Mm-hmm. So the more masculine you are, the more women you are able to get, and it's about like manipulating women. And the term gaslighting is stupid, but it is. Yeah. yeah right. But, <laughs> but basically if a woman ever brings anything up, like, like, Oh, like this, I, this has been making me feel this way. Or I don't like this about the relationship. They're like, you it's are crazy. She's crazy. You're yeah. delusional. Like stop talking. Like you, just, you sound crazy. Mm-hmm. And like just messing with their head. It's just, they're very, they're a very toxic kind of category. Okay. So that's the one polar and extreme. What's the yeah. other, the beta male, the beta male. Oh, uh, <laughs> they're the very baby girl boys uh adorable. nobody knows what that feminine. is they're okay. adorable they're very <laughs> they're, they're effeminate okay it's like the kind of guy that you'd want to be like your your best friend like your buddy because they'd be super easy to get along with they're like the golden retriever of men yeah you know like, <laughs> but not, they're not gonna argue with you like you you could they could be little spoon like <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be the little spoon. they're gonna be the little spoon like you they're could, gonna fold the you laundry could snuggle them and girls are saying that because people always say you need a masculine man man to embrace like the feminine side of yourself mm-hmm. and they're saying that like these more soft men you actually can embrace your feminine side even more because you kind of like 
you can mother them, basically. Mother them? Yeah. So people are saying that it's nice to like mother their boyfriend where you kind of talk to them in like a motherly tone and you nurture them and you cuddle them and you make them snacks. <laughs> so it's about reassurance, basically. Yeah, it's just it's supposed to be like like very easy, but I feel like that's not it sounds high maintenance. It's <laughs> it does. You got to cut their sandwiches into stars. <laughs> Get all the crust off. <laughs> when it really came down to it, they're very pouty. Yeah, they'd be very pouty. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they'd be very complained. Be like, I don't feel like you've been giving me enough attention lately. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on this? Obviously, you want somebody who's more so in the middle. Yeah, but that is not really like a thing anymore. I feel like. It's just not like you're one or the other. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously a spectrum, but just like. So if forced to choose based on, on what it is you're just saying, which, which would you beta. pursue the beta? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you answered that really quickly. Uh, really quick. That yeah. was a snappy response. Like beta men. <laughs> no. why, why? Based on your explanation to me, I don't, I guess as from a fatherly and a kind of an male alpha. standpoint, yeah. I don't understand why. <laughs> Good God, why, <laughs> Nevada? No, it's do not- you not see the value in having a man that acts very manly? Yeah, of course. No, and 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 I'm not I'm not it's saying not- to to an extreme like like the example no. that you provided. Well, that's not acting manly. That's the thing. There is nothing wrong with being very masculine, but masculine does not mean a jerk. <laughs> right, I, like I don't masculine, think being masculine means yeah. being protector being a jerk, and exactly. provider, not I not would- a degrader. Yes. I would love someone who's like super masculine and proud of their masculinity and embraces their masculinity and acts that way. But acting that way is very different than how these guys are acting. I think it's very situational. And I think that you at age 17 maybe don't think about the long term repercussions of such a decision. I think it's very important from for, from a female standpoint to be with a male counterpart that is masculine to the extent of being very obvious and on the surface. Again, I'm not saying to to that very far extent of being Andrew Tate, but <laughs> I think a man needs to be a man and yeah. and times will arise in your life to where you will see the importance of that. I didn't, I didn't Do you say disagree? I, I you're disagree making a face with in that. Me. I just no, said, I don't disagree. I think, I think that, yeah, yeah, I would, I've always been more drawn to somebody. I mean, I'd rather have someone that's going to have a strong head and that we're probably going to butt heads and argue with because then someone that's totally beta and does everything that I want and says, because I just, she smiles when you, I just, I don't really understand like how you can respect somebody that's like, yeah, that's kind of where I stand as well. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who's too submissive, somebody who's too eager to please is not somebody that I would have a ton of respect for as, as, as a, as a partner. What about in a woman? In a woman, I think again, like we've touched upon many times, I think it's incredibly important that a woman be uh, extremely effeminate in a number of ways, and and really embrace those feminine qualities that 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 embody what being a woman is all about. It's 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 a it's a balancing act for for all the ways in which I am very hyper masculine. You are hyper feminine. You you are a, a great mom. I could never serve as a mother to our children. And I think vice versa, there are qualities and things that you have been able to instill in our children. If they fall and get hurt, who they run into? Well, I got the band-aids. Dad, daddy will give him a <laughs> hug and reassure him as best I can, but nothing like a hug and kiss from mom to make things better. And he is right? born in a band-aid. It is what it is. There's just, there, there are certain innate qualities that, that each uh, gender role brings to the table and it makes for a very complete package. But I think if you have somebody who is a very effeminate male, you are, you are going to be very deficient in many ways. You guys may have noticed that we rely on our Raycon headphones here on the podcast and you have heard us rave about the everyday earbuds for years now. And that is because we use them every single day for work around the farm, working out, even homeschool. The earbuds have optimized gel tips that give you the perfect in-ear fit. They're so comfortable you can't even feel them and they stay in no matter what you're doing. Raycon Everyday Earbuds are perfect for travel or listening to your favorite podcast. I don't know, maybe it's this podcast. They last for a really long time with eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Yeah, they also sound great. You get all of the features of other premium audio brands starting at only half the price, which makes it great for the whole family. As a busy mom, I absolutely love the noise isolation feature because I can actually edit in peace when I'm in the house, but then I can also easily switch over to awareness mode with just a touch of a button. To check out Raycon for yourself, just click on the link down below in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash NWOS and you'll get 20% off your purchase from Raycon plus free shipping. We want to thank Raycon for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Let's get back to our conversation. Yeah, well, oh. I think that that makes it hard. 
I I didn't say I liked beta men. To be fair, I feel hey. like we have to clarify. You yeah, said you said you what said way would you go? if either like extreme sure, alpha, yes, or beta. I'd say beta because at least it'd be nice. <laughs> so you want somebody who's who's very well balanced but falls more so on the yeah. beta side. I feel okay. like I need to clarify. I didn't say I want an extreme beta. Fair I enough. Did not say that. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, because you can't be ultra feminine when you have a beta because then they're being feminine and then no one's being the man <laughs> and no one's stepping up and then so often it falls on the women to step up in a the situation and then they get mad you know this is making me think of because we just watched it last night oprah in uh the color purple oh yeah <laughs> like, oprah. her character no yeah, yeah her, she's so no, no no oprah, oprah the, was, the, was a very like domineering female in the that relationship yeah you didn't realize that was oprah no. yeah that was oprah in 1985 yeah wow yep. yeah anyway sorry that popped <laughs> yeah. into my head as we were discussing Married this to Harpo. yeah that was a great movie but yeah, I think I think I have a very different take on this too, and it's very interesting to see these responses out of you because I'm looking at it from a, through a different lens than you are. You're yeah. you're you're talking about looking for somebody to to date or become involved in a long term relationship with or potentially marry. I'm looking through it as the father of a daughter. <laughs> it's very very different. You want someone that's going to be super protective. Oh, I want somebody that's going to keep my daughter safe. Hell yeah! I want somebody Happy that's going to provide sure. for my daughter. I want somebody who's <laughs> not going to bite their tongue. I want somebody who's going to step up to make sure that she is safe in every freaking situation that they may encounter, no matter what it requires, even if it means giving your life. 100% and yeah. you're not going to get that out of a beta male. Yeah. But then it's like out of the, it, it is a weird movement. And I've seen a lot of this like super alpha, not, not that it's alpha men, but it's like, I don't even know what it is. It's like I almost alpha. have to say it's like the Andrew Tate men, like they worship this guy and, and they're taking stuff like from Dr. Peterson and they're taking it totally out of context. Mm -hmm. Like they literally are saying that you as a female cannot ever reject a man. I disagree with that. Because you're damaging this man's ego, ego. and who yeah. they are and that right. that by rejecting them. And what what Peterson was talking about when he said that was in marriage. And and I mean that doesn't mean that like women have to just like drop what they're doing and be totally submissive in marriage, but uh what he's saying is like when you turn your husband down, like it it knocks their ego and stuff. And if you're having like problems in marriage, this is kind of weird to discuss with you, but like, <laughs> you know, like there's sometimes like there's a really easy solution for a man, like, you know, but a long, long felt, very passionate and uh, emotional talk. Is yeah, that that's usually what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but anyway, that's what he was talking about. It was like a marriage talk, right? And now they're taking this quote mm -hmm. and they're taking it completely out of context and they're applying it to casual dating. How dare a woman ever reject a man because that is the ultimate, what they say, it's the ultimate insult. Yeah, I don't even, I heard a couple guys. Yeah, I've heard a couple guys that on say social it too. media. And saying, oh, Dr. Peterson said this. It's like, when the dude's ready, you're ready. If you're not, you've just like crushed him. Like Social have, media isn't reality. <laughs> so damaging. You have to yeah. remember that these are people who are speaking in sound bites oh, trying to get attention. social media either. That's like. <laughs> well, you're not, now you're talking about people who have been influenced by social yeah, media though, that's right? That's just that's, that's probably the bigger problem because the people on social media are, are rewarded for these very, outlandish statements that they make mm -hmm. there with, I mean, financially they are. So, um, but yeah, I think the bigger problem is that you have other 13, 14 to 18 year old boys who hear this crap and go, mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds great. That's yeah. so supportive of everything How I dare want. you shut me down? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you have these young boys listening to this and then they're like, this sounds fantastic. Women are our rewards. They're not allowed to shut us down ever. Mm -hmm. um, we are like these alphas in society. Yeah, like women are lesser than, and yes. they're, they're essentially here solely for for my benefit. And they love the sound of that. Yes. And they love the power and the like. You can get power and wealth and respect if you do these things and you you put out this ego and you go about the world in this way, carrying yourself in such a manner. And it's just so wrong. And it's just not what. It's not what good women are looking for. I agree. Conversely, though, I think it's, it would probably be more detrimental because regardless of how uh, macho a man tries to present himself to be, I think men, for the most part, are, are uh, you know, we're softies at, at heart. We really are. And I think when the it comes to... Are. Yeah, sure. I mean, of course, there are a-holes out there who are just that that person 100% of the time. But I think for the most part, you will find that even the most hardened exterior of a man is a very compassionate, very emotional person, um, as is the case for me, for sure. And especially when you start becoming involved in a, in a longer term romantic relationship that, of course, you're not going to be treated as being second or lesser than you will, you will you will be looked at as a, as an equal to be treasured. At least that's the case. That's what it should be. I think when you, when you have a beta and you have, uh, to, to use a very extreme example, you have somebody breaking into the house and they're looking at you as a female, like, oh, hey, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> that's, that's 
right. from a, from a very fatherly perspective. <laughs> that's that's not something that I would ever desire for any one of my kids, especially a daughter. Someone's breaking in. They're like, we're in this together. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, get out there let's, and do let's something. Let's both hide. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. I Does that make it. sense to you when I say that? Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. making sure. So we gotta find someone like in the middle. <laughs> yeah, in the middle. Okay. That mom and I both approve of. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's what it's gonna take. Yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. Before anybody freaks out on me, I'm joking. <laughs> sort of, for the most part. Kind of. Not really though. <laughs> yeah, <I was> <laughs> say, <laughs> since when? Yeah. So I don't know. So another really weird thing about like your upbringing was um, this whole move to. So we talk about social media a lot, but yet that it's what we do for a living. It's what you're getting into now. Yeah. And so how do you think that that has been? Because we started filming, I mean, pretty much every week we put out a video for the last four years. So, I mean, but we started when you were like 12, 13 Mm -hmm. with this whole social media thing. And then you were kind of raised in it. Your younger siblings are really raised being like a, a vlog family or a family vlog. And I think that sometimes when we go to these YouTube events and we're like the family that's there, (laughs) <laughs> that people view us that don't know our channel. I think they view us in a different light. Like, oh, God, it's one of those family vlogs. Um, but what do you think, like, the reality of that has been growing up and everything? And do you think that do you think that we struck a decent balance with you guys? Because a lot of people complain that you're not on the channel enough, especially you. Where's Nevea? Where's Nevea? Why isn't she on the camera? Me? Why don't you bring her out? All the time. I mean, I'm on my own stuff. Almost every video. <laughs> yeah, but the, re- the reason that we prefer you to be on your own stuff is because you have control of that. Mm-hmm. You have control of what you say, what you look like, what you're doing. Um, whatever you want to put out, you can put out. Yeah, but, she's old enough to make that decision for herself. No. Yeah, so we get a lot of complaints about you not being on the videos and the other kids aren't in the videos enough. And a lot of people are now saying, why aren't you having Kaimani and Nevea up there building Mm-hmm. And the reason that we don't have you guys up there building, even though it would be a great lesson in construction, is because we don't want to film you all the time. You know, like we don't want to be like, hey, guys, we're filming today and we're building because this is something that we chose and we don't want to be shoving a camera in your face. So do you think that we found a good enough balance or do you think there's moments when we lacked at that? Honestly. I mean, I don't, I can't really think of an instance where I felt like anything was overbearing at all. And I'm not just saying that because... Like, I'm used to it. It's not like one of those cases. I just don't. It really doesn't affect things much. Like, it, like for you guys, when you're out there doing it, you're doing it. But for us, it doesn't affect us. Like, your guys' videos do not it is really weird, impact though. us, I guess. And it's abnormal. Yeah, I mean, there's things that become abnormal because of it. Just like, like social stuff. Like, like. I'm a YouTube girl when I go places. Yeah. (laughs) But like nothing really negative though, no. I mean, because no one's ever like, ew. You don't feel like it's ever (laughs) interfered even to like a very small extent. I mean, I'm sure there have been disruptions along the way that have been caused by us doing what I mean, I know there have been very minor ones. You know what I mean? Like just like having having to stop and stop the car. We need to like stop the car and like, yeah. And it's, um, I don't, it's, it's, Probably my biggest concern as a parent is um, yeah, making sure not. that we never took things to such a far extent that it ever um, hurt any of you guys in any way. No, I mean, the only obstructions we've ever had is like, yeah, when we do stuff like that, like we're filming when we're out somewhere or something like that, like a trip. But if you think about it, if we weren't on YouTube, I mean, people are always taking videos and pictures anyway. Yeah, but it's different <laughs> like, when it's when it's put out for consumption yeah, purposes instead of I, just the people that you know. But I mean, it's real. Like we're not, we're never acting, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, like no one's never ever... asked you to redo something or rewalk through that door. Or yeah. Say that. Or you're not like, okay, yeah. you're going to say this and like you stand here. Like that doesn't happen. Right. Everyone just goes about what they're doing and then you're just filming stuff and it, when it, so, I mean, you might be putting it on YouTube, but if you were filming for your own personal Facebook page, like 90% of parents do, like it's, it's the same for us as the kids i mean yeah i always cringe when i see like sometimes people show behind the scenes or whatever and then the killer kid will say something they'll tell their kid to say something and then they'll be like wait no say it more excited no no (laughs) and then they're like coaching their child on how to speak like i never ever wanted it to go there Mm -hmm. and and so it's been a lot less i wouldn't even know if i'd call us a family vlog because we try to really not interfere with what your guy what you guys are doing and so I know that the audience gets annoyed with not seeing you guys very much, but sometimes you just 
don't want to film or you don't want to come out. And it's really important that we have those discussions. So why have you chosen to do that yourself now? And how are you going to separate your, you know, your, your real life, I guess, with what you choose to share? I have, I feel like I made like a conscious decision to keep, try to keep them separate. Like I make a plan for video. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this for a video. This will be my video. And I do that. And then I'm like, that's my video. Like I'm, and then I go back to normal life. Like I pick and choose what I want to put in a video. You understand that that gets more and more difficult over time. Those life progresses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there will always be with what, like with things coming up where I'm like, I can film this. Yeah. Once you have a spouse, once you start having kids yourself. Yeah. Well, I felt like that was kind of the reason that I chose to do it like that is because like if I do have a spouse and stuff and I don't really want just to put my relationships and stuff online, like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of YouTubers that will just, they'll put like all of their casual relationships online and that's Mm -hmm. online forever. (laughs) It's kind of like you break up two months later. So you're talking about about having a set structure and a very hard line stance about what it is you would record and actually uh, include in a final edit as opposed to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people like, YouTubers that show all sorts of stuff, you don't even ever see their spouses, even though like they have them, Mm -hmm. they just don't show it because they keep content and their life separate. It's very smart. And I would, I'd like to do that. I mean, I'm still personal in my videos and I talk about my life a lot, but I still, I pick something I'm going to put in a YouTube video and I I execute that. And then I like to try to keep most things private. And again, I think you are going to benefit from having the experience of watching mom and I do it because there are things that if I could go back in time, I would change about the way, like, like what we've recorded and what we've included and stuff, mm-hmm. I, I, I would have done it differently. And what would you change? I, I would probably uh, not make thing, not take things to such a, I don't know, I think I'd probably keep you guys out of it even more than we already make a conscious effort to. Um, just because again, from from a parental standpoint, I just, I just, I don't know, we, we, don't, we don't know what type of, uh, impact this has on, on very young people, um, especially living the way that we live. We, we don't, I, we can't yeah. say with absolute certainty that when the kids are, are 30 years old, that they're going to look back and be like, man, you know, that was really weird. And mm-hmm. why did we do this? And, um, it's something I spend a lot of time thinking about and because we made that decision for them. And mm-hmm. of course we are so very proud of, of all of you. We are proud of our family collectively as a whole. And so that's something that we want to, um, we don't ever want to shy away from, but they're, they're like for Eli, He's so young. He he has very fuzzy, faint memories um, of life prior to us always running around with a camera in our hand. I don't know what that means for him long term. I don't. I have no idea. And if I were to do the do it all over again, I think I'd probably pull back even more. It, it would be my answer to you since you asked. It's, yeah. it's something I think it's such a about. hard thing because I think so many people have fallen in love with the kids, and I think a lot of people have found a lot of joy from. Luckily, we have such an amazing community online around us. Like we have a lot sure. of grandmas and grandpas. Yes. And that, every, that's think, mostly our community. And I think that they, they really love seeing the kids and I don't find them. They've always been very respectful. That's been great. I love that part of yeah. it. And you're right on, on that end of things. Everybody's that's very, we got a comment today about why we don't show the kids more. And you mm-hmm. responded with, with basically what it is we're seeing here. And, and people were very supportive and understanding of that. Um, it's just, you know, it's just different when it comes to kids, when it comes mm-hmm. to your kids and, and, and it's not that end that I'm concerned with. I think the... the just the, the act of what we do, period. Yeah, just the love and care that people show. I think just more on a personal standpoint of like, hey, why did mom and dad, you know, constantly just like record everything that we did? It's, it's weird. It's abnormal it's, yeah. is what I'll say. But we and, definitely don't. I mean, I think we record about 1% of what the kids do, yes. if even. Yeah, but that's but that's yeah. because we've made a conscious effort right. to, to limit that as much as possible. But yeah. despite that, I mean, and especially early on, we weren't thinking in those same terms. We weren't. No. It, it all seemed very casual, like, aha, we're just making videos, no big deal. Um, and then over time, things progressed and became very real. audience got bigger. Audience got bigger. And, you know, that has a weird impact. I mean, we had, we've had... Many, many people run up to our kids and, and be like, hi to them by name, which is great. But again, um, from a parental standpoint where, again, I, I am the father of our family and I take more of a protective role. It always makes me like I always look at the kids to see how they're reacting. And if they're uncomfortable and they're if they're uncomfortable in any way in those situations, it causes me concern. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to be like go off about it, but it's it's just something that is constantly at the forefront of my mind, given what it is that we've done over the past few years. Yeah, I don't think that I've ever noticed them being uncomfortable in it, but. I do think that we've tried to be really careful. I think that there's a lot of oversharing that goes on online. I think mm-hmm. that people have lost discretion 
for the sake of content. Again, it's the but, problem with being financially rewarded for making poor life decisions, in my opinion, the way I see it. Yeah, there's a lot of oversharing going on. But now all of a sudden there's this kind of pushback with the oversharing. You've got just couples that are kind of having inappropriate conversations via their podcasts mm. or their videos. And they're being attacked online like this guy's not being supportive of his wife or he's saying, you know, or he's trying to like take the spotlight. And so a lot of these oversharers, which they're definitely oversharing. Mm -hmm. Like nothing's off the table for discussion. They do these Q and A's that are totally inappropriate, <laughs> and and the audience is starting to push back on it. And I think same with like these family vlogs. Boundaries. What's I, that I just, family? What's the lady? Six passengers. Yeah, and eight passengers. Eight passengers. I don't know how many passengers. <laughs> like talk about overshares, right? They had that that whole family YouTube mm. channel, and they were she was that lady's crazy. Her poor son. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, the teenage <laughs> son. She totally overshared everything about her her children. I mean, oversharing like, wasn't the problem though. Uh, Neglect and abuse was the problem. But oversharing started it. Like it went on for years. They had millions of followers, and she would overshare things about like puberty and stuff. There are people who will disagree with us on this in the audience. I guarantee it. And I think it's because there is a very there's a separation there between viewing these things on a screen versus if you had a behind the scenes glimpse onto what these situations look like, you would become very uncomfortable because we've seen it. Mm -hmm. We have seen in person reality people, shows. reality TV shows. We, we've mm -hmm. seen what this looks like and we've seen what it, what it does to families. And it's not, again, it's not normal to be constantly pointing a camera at a kid, uh, going out of your way to point a camera at a kid because they're, they're breaking down or throwing a tantrum or they're hurt and they're crying. Not cool. It's not okay. But it's what sells. So it makes it really hard. I exactly. like We just listened to um, Zach and Tori Roloff talk about why they were yes. putting reality TV and it was because their children. And what really triggered them is, you know, their little guy. Um, mm -hmm. What's the oldest one's name? Oh, gosh. I can't remember. I can't remember right now. <laughs> Adorable. So I, he's so, so cute. And so he's... Jackson. He was, Jackson. So he's having surgery... And um, I would think like Lila's the little girl and stuff. So he was having surgery and he asked if the cameraman couldn't be there, like wouldn't be there mm -hmm. for the surgery. And then that was the first time he had asked not to be filmed, but mm -hmm. he's getting a little older now. I think he's like in first grade. And um, that is what got them thinking like, okay, he doesn't want every aspect of his life filmed. So they decided to give it up completely. And I just thought that was a really, really interesting podcast. Kudos to them. Good for them for making that decision. I'm sure that was a difficult decision for them to make, yeah. um, but especially in his case, since he grew up with it as well. Um, yeah. yeah, it's 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 just the right thing to do. There was nobody that will convince me otherwise. And, and it, they're uh, still online. I mean, she's still on Instagram doing like sure. her mommy vlogger stuff. And but now it's all in in their yeah. control. They can make the decision themselves yeah. as to what it is that they want to put out there and what they what they want to withhold and keep private, which is completely their right. And again, I think it's the right decision. Yeah, I don't think anyone should ever film their children crying and put that online or anything like that's always really, really rubbed me the wrong way. Like this is a time of need for your kid yes. and you're shoving a camera in their face instead of being there for them. And mm -hmm. It's like, what message does that put out? So. It's why I so cherish the moments that, that I get to spend with each and every one of you guys when the cameras are not around. You and I had that fire the other night. Yeah. That was fun, right? <laughs> yeah, it was great. You Actually, got to do a, a phone call oh, meeting yeah, that, that I great. didn't have to attend. <laughs> and then Novea and I were outside in really cold, frigid weather having a fire. And there were no coming. I guess you had and a again, camera out periodically. I was actually filming. She was filming. That's why I made the fire. Oh, we made the fire. Right. But when we were just like, hang on, I didn't have the camera on. Yeah, again, better, separation. Right? I, I love those moments. Like, I, I like especially you getting older now. Like, I treasure those moments so much. They mean so much to me. And, it, and it's pure. It's what's real. When you start inserting cameras into things, um, mm -hmm. your, your mind becomes very distracted because your, your, your attention is not uh, where it should be. Your, your attention is divided between what it is that the camera is recording right. and what it is that you are actually viewing in real time. And so, I don't know, I just, I, I have come to appreciate so much more. This has changed over time, but I've so yeah. come to appreciate just moments where we get to organically uh, hang out and just keep things casual and have fun and not worry about uh, whether or not we're getting good audio mm -hmm. or how the lighting is. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do have to be more intentional with it. I think that was so great about like our long trip to Hawaii. Like we decided to go for 10 days so that we could not film half the days. Yes. And like I literally made a conscious effort of like, no, I'm leaving the camera at the Airbnb. Like, and we didn't even bring it. Yeah. What do you think about this? We're just blabbing away here. I know. Think about what? About what we're <laughs> talking about. Just, um, you know, uh, setting boundaries and making sure that you uh, keep your priorities in check and maybe not interfering with, for us, our children's lives, you being one of our kids. I mean, I just don't. You I don't, don't think it's a big like, deal? No, I don't okay. feel like it's ever just interfered that much, like in our personal lives as us as kids. Yep. Because when we are on the channel, you ask us, you're like, 
or we ask you, we're like, oh, we want to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Like Eli really wanted to be on the podcast. He right. did. Yeah. Dad was reluctant. You were like, I don't know if you should put him on. I and Eli was like, I really want to be on. <laughs> Eli and Kira wanted to do it. So, I, I, I told Melissa, that, so Eli and Kira both wanted to do this. Obviously, this is an episode that we now have up. You can go back and check it out if you'd like to. But I was ad- pretty adamant that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> they asked for a few months they really before wanted you finally to. said okay. I love it for ourselves because I love that we have the ability to go back and watch the kids at they a given so stage. Cute. They were <laughs> adorable as usual. But I don't, I don't always like putting our kids out there for like public consumption. I just don't. Now, a lot of people are probably going to wonder why we've had Nevea on for a second time and no Kaimani. So I asked Kaimani <laughs> today, I'm like, do you want to come on with Nevea or do you want to come on by yourself? And he was like, no, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to. He's yeah. more reserved. He's the most yeah, reserved out of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because he's actually a total wild child and he's hilarious. He's, like he's so funny. He's outrageous. He's a good kid. He's a good boy. <laughs> he is, but like he's so off the wall, <laughs> but yet like publicly he's not and he doesn't want to share it and so i think that's fine i mean i think yeah he great. actually really wants to be a youtuber oh, I just okay like, there yeah it's all that day drinking <laughs> there she goes again he really wants to be a youtuber and i think that it's gonna really shock everyone when all of a sudden he comes out with this big personality they're gonna be like whoa where was that all yeah this? i'm curious to see where that goes which he does come on he's like class clown type of person yes. oh, yeah. he's, he's hilarious all his oh, yeah. uh, all his voices and faces <laughs> he does the inhale voice Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, take the garbage out. No, <laughs> no, mom. I can't even do it. No, can't do is it. it weird for you now that now that you are are working your way, trudging your your way uh, into young adulthood? Is this a bizarre time period for you? And do you think that it's weirder that your your siblings are all getting older as well? Oh yeah, it's really weird. It's like because <laughs> everyone is getting older, and now I, because my entire life, literally. My entire life, I've been a child. Mm -hmm. Everything I've ever known, I've been a child. Mm -hmm. So now my entire life is changing. It is shifting. (laughs) We're building you the weaning pad. She wanted to know if she could still come in for dinner when she lives in the weaning pad. I I, I don't cook that well. But then she asked if she could come in for snacks. (laughs) It makes me so, like, when I think of it in those terms, it becomes so funny to me because, like, like me being the parent that I am, I have literally, like, built in a a tower (laughs) To, to stash my daughter into. You have. You've turned like, her into Rapunzel. I'm on the top She's floor. She's freaking Rapunzel, literally. This is and crazy. you're not going to let any boys come? You're going to put a dragon out front? That's you, you're the dragon. Boundaries, Melissa. Okay, these are <laughs> one of the things that we'll talk about off camera. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so it's weird for you? Yeah. Is it's, it? It's is it weird. <laughs> Is it weird seeing mom and I get older because we feel like we're we're kind of going through some changes of our own? Saw, Isn't that right? It's re- it's reverse puberty. It's reverse it's puberty. Like, it's the not fun puberty. It's the going from adulthood to I, middle agedness. I just saw a video of someone filming their mom. Their mom looked like she was like sixty or something. She was at an aquarium for the first time, and she looked so happy. And she was like filming herself at the aquarium, <laughs> and it said that it's your parents' first time living too. And I was like. <laughs> Aww. Wait, what? <laughs> he said, it's your parents' first time living too. What do you, I don't because understand. Because you always feel like everything's new to you, but like your parents are like older, like oh. they've lived life and it's like, it's their first time living too. <laughs> no, it does it's get like, weird. Like we're transitioning into a weird period too. We still got Kira and Eli and they're young, but it's like, I keep, I keep bringing up this, I keep bringing this up on the podcast. <laughs> it's like, you have served as the example of like, okay, now we, we have an understanding of how fast nine to 18 goes. Oh, it makes it, so it goes like that. Depressing. And so it just, yeah, it just bumps us I mean, out. Kira's almost the age that I was when we moved here. Yeah, see, when you say stuff like that. Uh, I was like a year and a half older than Kira. Yeah. <laughs> Not Kira. <laughs> yeah. Not strawberry shortcake. Sucks. Strawberry shortcake. Yeah, she's all into berry jam and. <laughs> you think life is going to become weird? In the next few years with this transition taking place. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be some growing. It's going to be an adjustment. Yeah. yeah. Like Nevea trying to come in and eat snacks when she's 19. <laughs> You're going to kick me out if I try to get like. No, you can come in. No, the, the, she told the me point, I can't eat your snacks. I told her. You told her she had. To, you told me that she had to buy her own snacks. No. The, the, what's <laughs> what's the entire intent with with facilitating this living space for you weaning we, weaning and and <laughs> someone and, said today that why are you kicking your child out not, you're you are literally kicking her out when she turns 18 i was like wait a minute we are building her a <laughs> sweet 
apartment yeah. attached to, live to our house. I know it's going to be, it's so gonna be cool. really nice. It's such a cool <laughs> That's spot. the best view. It does. And so it's attached to our house. She's coming in for dinner. She's coming in for coffee. And let's be serious. She's going to be in there 99% of the time anyway, because you don't like to be alone. And then... <laughs> like or all of the other siblings are going to be up in the apartment yeah. like that's what's going to wanting happen. to watch tv and everything <laughs> and like she's not going anywhere we're definitely not kicking her out but there has out, to be a transition in there where you start buying your own yes, gluten-free Oreos. this is the point i'm trying to make <laughs> is that we are trying to like hey you're you're in a technical adult now and you need to start <laughs> yes it's time for little birdie to start exercising them wings a little bit yeah so yeah the expectation is going to be that yeah you you do buy your (laughs) own groceries um and i'm not saying you need to be making like massive grocery hauls like we do every week we're a family of six currently we need to provide for you guys but for yourself like hey what are the things that i want to you know have available gluten-free oreos Gluten-free Oreos. Your um, Tostitos dip. You yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have a stove. You're going to have a microwave. You're going to have a refrigerator, freezer. Um, time for you to start purchasing some of your own groceries. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like I think breakfast, lunch, and snacks, you should buy those things. You should prepare them yourself. You can come in for family dinner. You can come down for coffee in the morning or whatever. Like it's kind of like a hotel. <laughs> like there's, there's going to be coffee in the morning. There's going to be dinner. But what then, a hotel like, gives you dinner for free. Well, they give you that horrible breakfast with the so just substitute carton them. eggs, <laughs> swap out breakfast for dinner. So I don't know. Like that's the whole point is it for you to start becoming an adult in an in an easy it's way. It's a weaning. <laughs> pad. It's a weaning pad. Yeah, it'll be an adjustment. It's going to be an adjustment for all of us in a number of ways. But are we all on the same page here? Like this needs to happen. Like this is a critical part of what? this transition period of like oh. you becoming an adult. Like. We, yeah, it's kind of inevitable. It's inevitable. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it, but again, we live in such a bubble here where we, we are so complacent and like and things never change. Like we are the, the epitome of stability in our household. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I feel like none, <laughs> of, us, like change. none of us really embrace change and do that well with it. We really no. don't. I know that's true for me, but I think it's like, I think you being up there by yourself with quiet, it's probably going to bug you. I'm bad with that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I think it'll irk you. Remember I told you, did, was it all of you that left the house? last week yeah. except me oh i hate being home alone it drove me insane i had to put noise on because i'm so i'm so used to there just <laughs> yeah, you're being, always yelling at everyone to be quiet i know i always want everybody to be quiet and relax and like calm down but but the second it was silent i was like something sounds wrong something's wrong like something bad happened yeah. when it's like quiet. it's the end of the world for yeah sure. yeah and everyone's <laughs> disappeared yeah it was not a good feeling it was really weird i grew up in a really big loud household so it was kind of weird, like, yeah, when I got my first apartment and I was all alone, I was super depressed. Yeah. Like, I used to play, I used to play, like, <laughs> I'm Dido. so excited. You guys have to look forward to No, I used to play, well, but mine was different. I was 2,000 miles from my yeah, family. And yeah. that was before long distance calling. Like, I had a phone card and I got to talk to them 20 minutes every Sunday for my Costco card that my mom would load for me. And... That was it. That was my only contact with my family besides like Christmas. In and North Dakota. Yeah, it was cold and miserable. I lived alone and I was depressed. I would listen to Dido music and drink tea and be the depressed. Cold yes, that's the song. That's the one. You're staring out the window like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what have I done? And uh, yeah, it was lonely. It was different. But then, you know, I got out of college and instantly started my own family. So, so see, then, you'll get to experience that. But if you yeah. ever want to remedy the silence, you can just run downstairs <laughs> and then you'll have everything back to normal again. No, yeah. There's been like tiny things that just made me feel like they're like super tiny, not big deal things. What do you mean? Like when I first started driving and I went to the mm-hmm. store for the first time by myself. It feels weird, right? Because it just, I'd never done that before. I was adulting. like, this is not right. I was Hashtag adulting. My mom. The first time I drove by myself, I was so anxious. Not because yeah. I felt like I, like I, it's not a driving thing. I was just like anxious. Like, this isn't right. Yeah. <laughs> Should not be allowed to do this right now by and myself. Again, <laughs> the weaning pad. Because if you had your own place and you were somewhere else, that, that would be compounded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still survive. And I think you're better for it at the same time. But it is harder. It is hard. I think that's why a lot of people, when they left their mom and dad's house, like back in the days when you would leave your mom and dad's house and you would get married, I think that was such a hard first year of marriage for so many young women because like they literally went from being a child to being a wife and Mm -hmm. being responsible for a household and the husband would go to work. And I think that's when you would get those anxious, depressed housewives because they literally didn't know what to do with themselves. It's a complicated thing. And I think most people watching or listening are probably making like such a big deal about this. It's not a big deal for our family. 
It's a big deal. Well, we have we are a very, very close protective family. I mean, you've spent a few nights away from us now. You had a, like I mean, maybe like four sleepovers. <laughs> so maybe yeah. four nights in 18 years almost. Yeah. Kaimani has never He's never spent stayed the night away from us. He has never walked out of his room and mom and dad not been there in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Like he's never like gone to a sleepover or anything. Kira has never Slept away from us, and now there is Eli. I know a lot of people think that's weird too. It's just the way we do things. We just things. don't do sleepovers. It's how we operate. Well, also, very... sleepovers suck. So. Yeah, well, we told you they did, but you really wanted to go, and we were like, "All right, fine, go." So and then you have fun getting sick. <laughs> Everything's about germs. It's just like you're around people, you're gonna come back with the flu. I remember I went to a sleepover party, my first sleepover. I was like 11. I brought my American Girl doll because me and that girl we liked our American Girl dolls, and when she came to our house, we played with American Girl dolls. Yeah. There were like five girls there and I brought it and they didn't have one. And I was like, uh oh. And then in the morning, her mom asked if I was hungry. I was like, yeah. So she made me like a, a smoothie for breakfast, but it had like a, what's the thing? The thing looks seeds. like an apple and chia seeds, jicama oh. and chia seeds. And it started to make me feel nauseous. It's just the comfort of I didn't of like home. it. So yeah. I went you- to the bathroom and I poured it down their sink and then I. <laughs> Dude, if that came back up, they're going to know what you did. No, I'm not going to say that. They'll never know. Oh, my God. She's going to be like, I I couldn't it. drink oh it, but God. I didn't want to be rude. I told you to be on your best behavior. I didn't want to be th- rude. Put it on the toilet. I was that's trying to, and I didn't. I couldn't do it. I was like. No, that's fair. Mm-mm. That's fair. I put it down the sink. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Going to sleepovers was always hard because the food was weird. The and food. You never slept right, and the smells were different. And it wasn't your toilet. And it just. Yeah, I don't it's just know. the comforts of home aren't, aren't <laughs> present. So yeah, weird. it was never as much fun as it sounded like in the daytime when you asked your parents. That's just life in general. We've had a lot of talks about that too. Right? <laughs> the, this whole, uh, what is it? The, the FOMO. FOMO. Yeah. yeah. Things always seem like they're really, really cool and fun and all that. And maybe sometimes they are, but for the most part, usually, <laughs> yeah, what you, whatever it is you're fantasizing about in your head, it probably doesn't jive with the reality of it. I have FOGO. What is that? Fear of going out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I just like every time I think about it, I'm like, Nyeh. does it like, frustrate you that mom and I are such hermits? Sometimes you yeah. are hermits, like an extreme. Not I, both of us. I'm very social. No, no. I actually, I don't no, know. You're not, who's no, worse. you're used to be very social. No, I never was. Ask my you friends used to from go high to school. mops. You she, went to mops. Super Jeremy, going to a mom's toddler group at church twice a month is not being super <laughs> social. Okay, if they had, if they had the dad equivalent, there was breakfast there. Could you picture? Could you see me going to that? No, but I was. Yeah, thank you. I was trying to. The reason that I went to mops is because Nevea was four and five, and you know, and I was being told that your kids need early socialization or they're going to be jerks. <laughs> like I would read that stuff. And actually that's another thing that like Dr. Peterson says is like, if you don't er- like socialize your children early, they become jerks. Mm-hmm. And then Nevea got a little testy as a toddler. Like you were not the greatest at the park. Like, that was a Nevea problem. You'd be like, fair. get off the swing. Boof. No, no, no. <laughs> I shoved him off the swings. He made fun of me. Either way, he deserved it. there were <laughs> events when I would take her places and so I thought that maybe she just needed to be socialized. So like a lot of it was that I got to take her and she went to the little preschool class. But then she got sick once and then we I stopped going. Okay. To be you said events. I was I was always retaliating. Okay. <laughs> I was never those, causing those preschool kids are problems. Real problems. And like their kid was making fun of my door, the explorer purse. And then I tried to he ignore him like and Dora. then he kept doing it. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kill this him. This is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let me, do you think that at age 30, you will be a hermit like mom and I, or do you think you will be a social butterfly? You think you're going to be a hermit to him? Mm-hmm. Why? What makes you say that? You're, you're, like I said, you are the social butterfly of our family. What makes you think that you're going to? Yeah, when to, there's boys there. What makes you think you're, <laughs> what makes you think you're going to come back to the dark side with mom and I? Uh, that's already happening. Yes. What do you mean? I, I have gone, I've grown increasingly less social as I've gone on. Like I enjoy going out, but. I don't, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't know. I think it's an I, I age just, thing. When, when you were 17, 18 years old, like you, you, you want to be out. I want to go out, but I'm not that, I'm just not that social, honestly. <laughs> social? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just very selective, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Like, we are extremes, though. Not I, me especially. Like, leave me here for six weeks at a time without having to see another person other than my family, and that's okay by me. Like, I think that would most that would drive most people crazy. I'm yeah. perfectly comfortable with that. I, I do have to leave the house. 
If yeah, I don't leave I, the house like once a week, I start to like. What was it? We just we just figured out when you you had to ask me. You're like, have you not left the property in like eight days? And I was like, yeah, well, eight days. That's <laughs> lightweight for you. Oh, that's lightweight. Yeah, that's what? lightweight. I always have to go once a week to the grocery store. Yeah, and this I week I have it, to like, go twice. Oh no. If mm. if I I think I usually go I usually go like seven to ten days, which I think again for most people would be like, what are you crazy? No, we I, and especially when you live on acreage and. You get outside and you, uh, I don't know, I, maybe I'm just weird. I like it. I don't, I don't, I, I like solitude. I have always craved solitude and I was an only child growing up. Um, it's what I enjoy. I don't know, no knock on anybody out there. I have no problem like socializing with people. I just don't seek it out. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not a jerk, I promise. <laughs> Most of the time. Just, just a hermit. Just a hermit. You're, you're just an introvert. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely introverted, and uh, I like solitude. Like I said, I mm-hmm. like I like quiet. I like uh, I like sitting outside. I like staring at the mountains. I like watching the snowfall, like we had today. Oh, me in a nutshell. For spring. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you're in mine. You're in a box. Uh, we're losing control here. Um, I'm gonna wrap, wrap this up. Wind this yep. down. Navea, anything else from you? Plug I, promote. I, 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 Promote? Nevea Souza oh, on YouTube. Oh, a shameless YouTube. plug? Yeah. Nevea yeah. Souza on YouTube. Please subscribe. It's like hot wings. <laughs> Boom. What do you got going on? When's your next video coming out? Oh, my next video? I, well, my next video, it's either going to be about... No, no. Don't say what it's okay. going to be about. Okay. Just say when it's coming out. It's a surprise. When is it coming out? I don't know. Soon, though. <laughs> I don't have an exact date. Get to editing. I am editing. I don't have an exact date. Well, this is coming out Wednesday. Wednesday. So will it be out within a few days? No. <laughs> what? A few more days. Okay. After the Good Simple days. Living every Saturday, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. See, right we here have a on schedule. New World Old Soul every Wednesday, 8 a.m. We try to make it happen for you as often as we can. Go ahead and subscribe to Nevaeh Susan. It'll be a surprise. I like to wing it. You get surprised. <laughs> I like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right this has been fun we're gonna have to check back in with you here you turn 18 this year we'll do this again how's that sound yeah all right first podcast yeah. i mean you can actually say no and there's nothing mom and i can do about it at that yeah. point so you'd be a grown-up well we well, could not let her live in the tower, out of the-, Kick out of the, tower. <laughs> <laughs> the princesses are trying to escape the tower usually yeah. yeah no it's always fun it's good to check in with you periodically thanks for doing this we appreciate it yes sir yes sir wow oh, Ooh, shoot. Dang, i like the it food. <laughs> All right. Uh, love and appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Mom, anything else from you? No. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being here.